nothing changes. Well, I finally got round to fitting a spoil board to the CNC. That's 12mm MDF, which I picked up from B&Q this morning. Um, I've got a 1200mm be about 500mm I think it was. Quite a biggish sheet for about 12, 12 quid somewhere in that region. And I've managed to get three spoil boards out of that, believe it or not. So I'm good for spoil boards for a while. I had them cut me the three bits. The cuts were free. Uh, and I had some scrap left over to play around with as well. Um, I bought I bought these. I think they're, I can't remember if they're M5 or M6 now. I did have the label, but I seem to have chucked it. I'm sure they're M5 or M6. Here we go, here's the label. They're M6 at 25mm. Um, really, they need to be about 15mm if you want to recess them in and sit below the surface. Um, so I had to cut them down with an axle. Uh, I didn't measure beforehand, so that was a failure on my part, but you know, not hard to come round or overcome. Um, on the bottom of those, I've used these square nuts because they slide in into the extruded aluminium quite well um, so yeah I, I, uh, I mark three centimeters in from the edges to get the corner measurements and um, bored a hole through and, and countersunk that a bit because what I'm going to do later on is um, to get a leveling tool or a bottoming tool whatever you want to call it and just run that across the bed to, to square it off to the rest of the machine which I've not done yet, but I've recessed those in anticipation of doing that so it doesn't be chewing across those and knackering itself up. Um, I've got it anchored, the, the spoil board anchored in all the corners, um, one in each side and then one in the middle at the back, which you probably can't quite see, just down there. So, uh, what's that? Three, six, eight, about nine, six, seven places even, not nine. Wake up. Um, yeah, I've got it anchored in seven, seven spots. So it's good and firm. Uh, and I've already noticed an improvement. Uh, that's a PCB I've just done. If it'll focus for you. There we go. Uh, and to be honest with you, even before I've milled the spoil board level, the, 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 the difference is, is totally noticeable. Uh, I mean, look how clean those cuts are. And the depth of cut looks pretty even as well. There's no high spots or low spots to the naked eye. Um, to a, a precision instrument measuring depth I suppose there would be high and low spots but that's a dramatic improvement over the results I have been getting just from getting a bit of spoil board and then screwing the PCB firm to it I mean that's hard to the deck there's no spring or movement in, in that PCB at all uh, whereas before when I was using where are they? when I was using these um, in conjunction with the uh, extruded uh, aluminium bed uh, and some hardboard underneath as well everything was springing about you know not just the PCB but acrylic as well they just don't hold very well with ease and so screwing it down is a hell of a lot better um, I'm also quite chuffed um, because once I get the, uh, the, the uh, uh, bed probing bed leveling whatever you want to call it set up for the PCB and, and using Gerbil uh, I might get better results even than that so uh, this was cut at a depth of 0.075 millimeters uh, that's my my preferred depth of cut using a 0.1 millimeter 30 degree uh, V bit and you see the ends a bit knackered on that um, <laughs> I seem to, to uh, manage to take the points off these things quite nicely probably cutting too much too soon and and what have you but I tend to allow for things like that I, I over cut as well just in case there's any unevenness so I do cut down into the uh, FR4 so not just through the copper pore there but down into the FR4 fiberglass as well just to make doubly sure so you end up with little islands of, of um, pads and things sat there but it looks all clean and nice and I'm really impressed with those results um, all I want to do now is find a way of milling the outside out um, something fluid, a fluid way of doing it if you like to go from PCBG code to Eagle to do the board and then to cut it out 
without too much messing about and too many different programs so I've not managed to master the milling that out yet but I've had a few ideas I'm going to try uh, I'm still waiting for my 400 watt motor uh, I think that's due here today so there we are that's still the stock 200 watt one it doesn't do a bad job for what it is you know it's perfectly acceptable PCB and I've done acrylic with it so. but I'm quite happy with the results I'm getting just from pouring a bit of old wood down a bit of old 12mm MDF um, by the time I've done milling at that, it'll probably be less than 12mm once it's evened out. So it'll probably be about 11mm, something like that. But the results speak for themselves. Um, you know, there's, there's no areas at the back where it's deeper cut or shallower cut than the front. Obviously it wants me to clean up your brush. There's still some debris. But overall quite happy with that in fact I can just see the patterning from the FR4 underneath looks quite nice and this is a board for a friend so he'll be impressed with that um, I messed around with, this, with the, uh, the feeds and the speeds as well um, turn the RPM of the spindle down a bit and then up the speeds of the uh, of the movements of the machine a little bit as well by, uh, by about another 100 millimeters a minute I think it was I, I upped it so I'm getting a bit confused because I, I, I'm using millimetres per minute feed rate in um, PCBG code uh, and it's millimetres per second in another program I'm using so it's a bit confusing at the minute but yeah it, it was it was about 100, 200, 250 millimetres a, a minute feed rate on this and then about halfway on the, on the spindle speed setting and as I say it's 0.075 millimetre cut depth for the point one bit. I mean, look how fine those those traces are. If it'll let you, they are super fine. I mean, probably about twice as thick as a hair from the way I see it. But that's marvellous. So it should be even better once I get the spore board milled down. So if you've got one of these it's well worth pouring a spore board down one to save the aluminium bed and preserve it uh, and two get better results now all I've got to do is wait for my motor and uh, I've got a few more materials I can practice around with now I've got a bit of aluminium I picked up from the scrapyard um, I've got some pine that I'm going to have a go so a long thin a long plank of pine it's about four or five inches wide be about half an inch to an inch thick so I'm going to cut that up into squares and have a mill around with that as well and just see what results I get using different materials and what the limits are of the machine and, and its operator I suppose so with that I will say thank you for watching and bye for now